An elf by elves is a type of humanoid supernatural being in Germanic folklore. Elves appear especially in North Germanic mythology being mentioned in the Icelandic poetic Edda and Snorri Sturluson's prose Edda. In medieval Germanic-speaking cultures elves generally seem to have been thought of as beings with magical powers and supernatural beauty ambivalent towards everyday people, and capable of either helping or hindering them one however, the details of these beliefs have varied considerably over time and space, and have flourished in both pre-Christian and Christian cultures. Sometimes elves are, like dwarfs associated with craftsmanship. Wayland the smith embodies this feature. He is known under many names depending on the language in which the stories were distributed. The names include Voluned in Old Norse, Wieland in Anglo-Saxon and Wieland in German. The story of Wayland is also to be found in the prose Edda II. The word elf is found throughout the Germanic languages and seems originally to have meant white being. However, reconstructing the early concept of an elf depends largely on texts written by Christians in Old and Middle English, Medieval German and Old Norse. These associate elves variously with the gods of Norse mythology with causing illness, with magic and with beauty and seduction. After the medieval period, the word elf tended to become less common throughout the Germanic languages, losing out to alternative native terms like Swigdwarf in German and Huldra hidden being in North Germanic languages, and to loan words like fairy borrowed from French into most of the Germanic languages. Still, beliefs in elves persisted in the early modern period, particularly in Scotland and Scandinavia, where elves were thought of as magically powerful people living usually invisibly alongside everyday human communities. They continued to be associated with causing illnesses and with sexual threats. For example, several early modern ballads in the British Isles and Scandinavia originating in the medieval period describe elves attempting to seduce or abduct human characters. With urbanization and industrialization in the 19th and 20th centuries, beliefs in elves declined rapidly, though Iceland has some claim to continued popular belief in elves. However, elves started to be prominent in the literature and art of educated elites from the early modern period onwards. These literary elves were imagined as tiny playful beings with William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream being a key development of this idea. In the 18th century German romantic writers were influenced by this notion of the elf, and re-imported the English word elf into the German language. From the romantic idea of elves came the elves of popular culture that emerged in the 19th and 20th centuries. The Christmas elves of contemporary popular culture are a relatively recent creation popularized during the late 19th century in the United States. Elves entered the 20th century high fantasy genre in the wake of works published by authors such as J.R.R. Tolkien. These repopularized the idea of elves as human sized and human like beings. Elves remain a prominent feature of fantasy media today. From a scientific viewpoint, elves are not considered objectively real. Three, however, elves have in many times and places been believed to be real beings. Four, where enough people have believed in the reality of elves that those beliefs then had real effects in the world, they can be understood as part of people's worldview and as a social reality, a thing which, like the exchange value of a dollar bill or the sense of pride stirred up by a national flag, is real because of people's beliefs rather than as an objective reality for accordingly. Beliefs about elves and their social functions have varied over time and space 5. Even in the 21st century fantasy stories about elves have been argued both to reflect and to shape their audience's understanding of the real world 6-7, and traditions about Santa Claus and his elves relate to Christmas. Over time people have attempted to demythologize or rationalize beliefs in elves in various ways. The English word elf is from the Old English word, most often attested as elf, whose plural would have been asterisk elf.
Although this word took a variety of forms in different Old English dialects these converged on the form elf during the Middle English period 34 during the Old English period separate forms were used for female elves such as Eilfen putatively from Proto-Germanic asterisk El Beta Injo, but during the Middle English period the word elf routinely came to include female beings 35. The Old English forms are cognates linguistic siblings stemming from a common origin with medieval Germanic terms such as Old Norse Alpha Elf plural Alpha Old High German Alp Evil Spirit Place Alp Elp Feminine Elb Burgundian Asterisk Alps Elf and Middle Low German Alp Evil Spirit 36 37 These words must come from Proto-Germanic ancestor language of the attested Germanic languages the proto-Germanic forms are reconstructed as asterisk l beta iz and asterisk l beta z 36 38 Germanic asterisk l beta iz tilde asterisk l beta z is generally agreed to be a cognate with Latin albus mat white old Irish alban flock ancient Greek alpha lambda phi omicron sigma alphos whiteness white leprosy and Albanian l barley and the Germanic word for swan reconstructed as asterisk albert minus compare modern Icelandic alp is often thought to be derived from it. These all come from a Proto-Indo-European root asterisk H, Elb minus, and seem to be connected by the idea of whiteness. The Germanic word presumably originally meant white one, perhaps as a euphemism. Jacob Grimm thought whiteness implied positive moral connotations, and noting Snorri Sturluson's of Josulfer, suggested that elves were divinities of light. This is not necessarily the case, however. For example, because the cognates suggest matte white rather than shining white, and because in medieval Scandinavian texts whiteness is associated with beauty, Alaric Hall has suggested that elves may have been called the white people because whiteness was associated with specifically feminine beauty. 39 Some scholars have argued that the names Albion and Alps may also be related, possibly through Celtic. 36. A completely different etymology making elf a cognate with the Arbus semi-divine craftsman in Indian mythology was suggested by Adilbert Kuhn in 1855-40 in this case asterisk L beta iz would connote the meaning skillful inventive clever and could be a cognate with Latin labor in the sense of creative work. While often mentioned this etymology is not widely accepted. Dot, the earliest surviving manuscripts mentioning elves in any Germanic language are from Anglo-Saxon England. Medieval English evidence has therefore attracted quite extensive research and debate 50-51-52-53 in Old English. Elves are most often mentioned in medical texts which attest to the belief that elves might afflict humans and livestock with illnesses, apparently mostly sharp, internal pains and mental disorders. The most famous of the medical texts is the metrical charm with Phaestus against a stabbing pain from the 10th century compilation Lachnunga, but most of the attestations are in the 10th century Balls Leech Book and Leech Book 3. This tradition continues into later English language traditions too. Elves continue to appear in Middle English medical texts 54. Beliefs in elves causing illnesses remained prominent in early modern Scotland where elves were viewed as supernaturally powerful people who lived invisibly alongside everyday rural people 55 thus elves were often mentioned in the early modern Scottish witchcraft trials many witnesses in the trials believed themselves to have been given healing powers or to know of people or animals made sick by elves 56 57 throughout these sources Elves are sometimes associated with the succubus-like supernatural being called the Mare 58. While they may have been thought to cause diseases with magical weapons, elves are more clearly associated in Old English with a kind of magic denoted by Old English sign and sitza, a cognate with the Old Norse Sadeha and also paralleled in the Old Irish Zerglige Con Kulain 5960 by the 14th century. They were also associated with the arcane practice of alchemy. From around the late Middle Ages, the word elf began to be used in English as a term loosely synonymous with the French loan word fairy 120 in elite art and literature at least. It also became associated with diminutive supernatural beings like Puck Hop Boblins, Robin Goodfellow, the English and Scots Brownie, and the Northumbrian English Hop 121.
However, in Scotland and parts of northern England near the Scottish border beliefs in elves remained prominent into the 19th century. James VI of Scotland and Robert Kirk discussed elves seriously. Elf beliefs are prominently attested in the Scottish witchcraft trials, particularly the trial of Isobel Gaudi and related stories also appear in Folk Tales 122. There is a significant corpus of ballads narrating stories about elves, such as Thomas the Rhymer, where a man meets a female elf, Tamlin, the elfin knight, and Lady Isabel, and the elf knight, in which an elf knight rapes, seduces, or abducts a woman. And the Queen of Elfland's Norris, a woman, is abducted to be a wet nurse to the Elf Queen's baby, but promised that she might return home once the child is weaned. Early modern Europe saw the emergence for the first time of a distinctive elite culture, while the Reformation encouraged new skepticism and opposition to traditional beliefs. Subsequent Romanticism encouraged the fetishization of such beliefs by intellectual elites. The effects of this on writing about elves are most apparent in England and Germany, with developments in each country influencing the other. In Scandinavia, the Romantic movement was also prominent, and literary writing was the main context for continued use of the word elf, except in fossilized words for illnesses. However, oral traditions about beings like elves remained prominent in Scandinavia into the early 20th century 128. Elves entered early modern elite culture most clearly in the literature of Elizabethan England 121 here Edmund Spencer's Fairy Queen 1590 minus used fairy and elf interchangeably of human-sized beings, but they are complex imaginary and allegorical figures. Spencer also presented his own explanation of the origins of the elf and elfin kind, claiming that they were created by Prometheus 136. Likewise, William Shakespeare in a speech in Romeo and Juliet 1592 has an elf lock tangled hair being caused by Queen Maub, who is referred to as the fairy's midwife 137. Meanwhile, a Midsummer Night's Dream promoted the idea that elves were diminutive and ethereal. The influence of Shakespeare and Michael Drayton made the use of elf and fairy for very small beings the norm and had a lasting effect seen in fairy tales about elves collected in the modern period. With industrialization and mass education traditional folklore about elves waned however, as the phenomenon of popular culture emerged elves were reimagined in large part based on romantic literary depictions and associated medievalism 145. As American Christmas traditions crystallized in the 19th century, the 1823 poem A Visit from St. Nicholas widely known as Twas the Night Before Christmas, characterized St. Nicholas himself as a right jolly old elf. However, it was his little helpers inspired partly by folk tales like the elves and the shoemaker who became known as Santa's elves. The processes through which this came about are not well understood, but one key figure was a Christmas-related publication by the German-American cartoonist Thomas Nest 146-145. Thus in the US, Canada, UK and Ireland, the modern children's folklore of Santa Claus typically includes small, nimble, green cloud elves with pointy ears, long noses and pointy hats, as Santa's helpers. They make the toys in a workshop located in the North Pole 147. The role of elves as Santa's helpers has continued to be popular, as evidenced by the success of the popular Christmas movie Elf. Elfish beings appear to have been a common characteristic within Indo-European mythologies 151 in the Celtic-speaking regions of Northwest Europe. The beings most similar to elves are generally referred to with the Gaelic term as C152-153, the equivalent term in modern Welsh is Tylwyth Teg. In the Romance-speaking world beings comparable to elves are widely known by words derived from Latin far to fate, which came into English as fairy. This word became partly synonymous with elf by the early modern period 120 other names also abound however such as the Sicilian Donners de Fura ladies from outside 154 or French Bonds Dames good ladies 155 in the Finnic speaking world the term usually thought most closely equivalent to elf is Haltaja in Finnish or Haldaja Estonian 156 meanwhile an example of an equivalent in the Slavic speaking world is the Vila plural vial of 
Serbo-Croatian and partly Slovene folklore 157 elves bear some resemblances to the satyrs of Greek mythology, who were also regarded as woodland-dwelling mischief-makers.